Oh, hi. My name is Bo Jennings from the band Cheyenne. Before I waste money on records, I make sure to check out Take It or Heave It at heavemedia.com. Welcome back to the newest edition of Take It or Heave It. I'm Ryan Peters. And I'm Amy Dittmeyer. Wait a minute. Lady Wes, where's boy Wes? He has his own show now. Wes has his own show now? Yeah. Wait. Wes has his own show now. Yeah, he's doing the brown couch sessions. Wesley Allen Soltis has his own show now. Wes can't speak English. I had to teach him how to read. He's functionally illiterate. But he tested well. Who did he test well with? 78-year-old women. 78-year-old women? Do you think 78-year-old women are really the people that are like watching the show? Because I'll take my pants off for 78-year-old women. Is that what Wes did? Did Wes just like sleep around with a bunch of 70 Welcome back to Take It or Heave It. I'm Ryan Peters. This here is Amy Dittmeyer. And this is your Indie Rock Review Show. That's right. We're going to review four albums today. We'll let you know which ones are good, which ones you want to take, which ones you want to heave. And you can go to our website right now and check out new music from Morrissey, Boss Brown, and local favorites, Yourself in the Air. Drew Danbury and the Fatal Fury is a four-piece act from Utah. His debut album on Emergency Umbrella Records, This Could Mean Trouble, You Don't Speak for the Club, was released November 4th. The single you're listening to is Residence in Orange County. The friends, just know what holds you dear, but it's just all too ghastly to see you cry. Your makeup's running smeared. Drew Danbury's ability to apply melody and charm to his acoustic music made me want to take the album. I think the album has a rootsy, kind of Southern Americana charm about it, and I'm going to take it. So, a uh, little known fact to people outside of our Heave staff, Drew Danbury is not only a musician, but he was uh, previously a guest writer for Heave. I did not know that. Well, see, you learn something new every day. What, uh, what did you think of the album? I really liked it a lot. It had this certain, like, charm to it that really connected with me really well. I thought the lyrics were good, the production value, his playing style, and just, like, his voice in general just really gets me. Gets you, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that like charm is probably a good word to describe it because it's real rootsy, kind of an uh, Americana feel to it. And it, I, I find that kind of music charming. Um, and I, sometimes, sometimes I wish that the band had a fuller sound. Um, you know, the, the stripped down music lets you connect with them really well, but at the same time I wish that there was just kind of more oomph to it sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but that's only because I think it would complement the melodies that he writes, which are fantastic. See, I like the part or where it's just him because I feel like with other people, his overall message would get muddled. Mm -hmm. But to me, when it's just one man and a guitar, um, it's just a more intimate experience because I feel like he's singing to me and not with a bunch of other people. Yeah. The soundtrack of our lives is a Swedish group that has been around since the 90s. Their double album, Communion, was released in November on Warner Brothers Sweden. The single you're listening to now is R.A. The overall repetitive nature of Communion, as well as the dry sound of the soundtrack of our lives, made me want to heat the album. So soundtrack of our lives is a little bit formulaic, but nonetheless, I think they do that formula well. I was on the fence about it, but I think that I'm going to take it. So I know that you are a giant fan of televised wrestling. It's very true. It's true. It's the spandex. Um, so I thought you might want to know that soundtrack of our lives, one of their songs, was the theme song for WrestleMania 21. That makes no sense. No, but <laughs> okay, it is. It is what it is. You were in the audience that day, I believe. I, th I think it was. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, fondly. Yeah. So the album, I liked it. I wish that it wasn't a double disc, though. I agree. It was way too long and too much of the same thing. Yeah, I mean, we've actually talked on Take It or Heave It before about how double disc albums can be pared down to a single disc. And usually, you know, if it's a good double disc, it would make a great single disc because, you know, you just kind of edit down a little bit and you keep the cream of the crop. Right. Like, I just feel that Soundtrack of Our Lives is just kind of beating the dead horse, just like Oasis. Um, they're just putting out the same thing over and over again. I feel like with a band, your whole purpose is to constantly grow. Yeah. But, they I do... mean... There's nothing wrong with putting out the same thing no. at the same time. They do sound a lot like Oasis. They have that sort of like 60s Brit pop kind of feel that, that Oasis capitalizes on. In fact, I think they toured with Oasis. Um, they do do the formula well, though, which is the one thing I will say. Even though, they're like you said, they're beating a dead horse, they're beating it well with, with a little bit of talent. Uh, beating horses is awesome. So, I just um, laughed at beating it well. Because <laughs> I'm five. Way to go. <laughs> 
<laughs> Way to go. We the Living is a quartet from the Midwest. Their second EP, Depths of the Earth, came out on iTunes January 9th and is independently released. The single you're listening to right now is Demon. We the Living's larger, layered, and more mature sound made me take Depths of the Earth. There's lots of mid-tempo balladry, but nonetheless, it's done very, very well. The musicianship is strong, and I really like John Rooney's vocals and lyrics. I'm going to take it. So for We The Living, their song, Best Laid Plans, last fall, Levi's, the jean brand, um, decided to use that as the main theme for their Live Unbutton campaign, mm -hmm. which is ironic in that we adopted that as a life motto and... Oh, yes. I love arrested. taking off my pants. Yeah, and we've been arrested many, many times because of it for indecent exposure. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, a state of Illinois, get this fucking straight, we will decide what is decent and what's not. Yeah. But it did get us thinking that you, should, uh, you the he viewer, should probably tell us what your uh, craziest indecent exposure story is. So just check out the number on the bottom of the screen, call our comment line, and let us know. I'd like to hear how you can top us. Yeah, exactly. Or be topless. <laughs> oh! Nice. Anyways, back to the album at hand. Um, I really liked We The Living's album. Mm. Um, I feel like they've grown as a band, have gotten a fuller and deeper sound, mm -hmm. and uh, Depths of the Earth is like a huge step forward from their previous album, Heights and Heavens. Definitely. For me, I wish that, you know, a lot of the songs are mid-tempo, and it works on the first and the last song on the album for me because they're, they um, build to this big conclusion. Some of the songs in the middle get a little bit muddled. I wish that they were more dynamic or sort of di differentiated themselves mm -hmm. from one another. But it's a minor complaint because, you know, I think that the lyrics are strong and John Rooney, the, the lead singer, has a great voice. And he's good looking to boot. So ladies out there, check him out. Healthy Student is a group of robot rockers from California. Their independent November release, Robots Are People 2, shows off their digital mastery. The single you're listening to now is Voice Box. I love my voice box. My Rolls Royce Box. While grading at times, I really like the danceable nature of Healthy Student. So I'm personally going to heave Healthy Student because the robot rock electronica isn't my type of music, but it is well done. So if you like that type of music, it might be something you want to check out. So Healthy Student is one of our numerous MySpace friends. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to become a friend with uh, Heave Media on MySpace, all you got to do is go to myspace.com slash heave media, and we will add you. I'm a friend of Heave Media. I, too, am a friend of Heave Media. kind of wish I wasn't, but... I mean, whatever. Whatever, you're not, you're not in the top friends, so. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> that's why I don't like them. Anyways, um, I was really on the fence with the Healthy Student album. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, the, musically speaking, it's really, really good. Um, I thought with electronic music, um, the downfall of it is that it can be repetitive. But with Healthy Student, it was, there was a lot of variation. I felt like um, it was very danceable yeah but i really couldn't get over the voices that's the thing we should really clarify sort of the uh, the yeah. um the theme that goes with the music is that it's all robot voices like robotic computerized voices mm -hmm. that sing the whole thing in fact when we we asked the, the band about it um they wrote back to us and they said that uh their founder um was born without a human voice and only right. had a robot voice which at first i thought was a joke but the more i thought about it the more i thought that that could technically be true right um not that he was actually born with a robot voice but that you know you know, uses a computerized voice like Stephen Hawking or something like that. So, I don't know. Yeah. But I still feel like with electronic bands like Daft Punk, you can still feel the human element mm -hmm. in it. And I just felt just a strictly computer-based voice was just... I couldn't make the connection, really. Right. Like, this would be really good in, like, like a, a club. Like, if you're dropping oh, yeah. acid, you know, and there's, like, glow sticks If, like, the girls there. were just like, fuck, guys, I'm just going to dance. Yeah. It'd be great. That would be fantastic. Yeah. To recap, Amy and I both enjoyed Drew Danbury's folksy charm and melody. For soundtrack of our lives, I can enjoy the Britpop sound, but Amy was bored by the excesses of the band's double-disc album. With We The Living, there are smart lyrics, textured songs, and strong vocals. And finally, for Healthy Student, it's an acquired taste that I heaved, but Amy enjoyed it enough to dance to it. Thanks for watching our latest edition of Take It or Heave It. I'm Amy Dittmeyer, and this is Ryan Peters. That's right, and if you haven't had a chance yet, why don't you swing by the website, heavemedia.com, and you can read and comment on a new article in the culture section about the worst infomercials on late night television. That's right. HeatMedia.com would like to thank the Polish Ambassador for creating our plan. If you'd like to know more, go to Polish Ambassador.